Hi there. As you can see, I am not in the office, and instead I'm on a stump next to a tree and next to quite a few other trees. I love this part of the valley. I love it. It's going to be full of people pretty soon, enjoying their time making memories, but right now it's just you and me and some trees that have been scorched, many cut down in order to prevent further spread of fires, and a lot of memories. And now they get to witness a boy sitting in the middle of nowhere talking to a camera, <laughs> talking to you. Speaking of you, you asked me some wonderful questions on YouTube and Instagram, and honestly, my, my reaction first was to be impressed, and second was to try and think of answers. <laughs> so I went out here, I listened to the birds for a while, and now I think, I think I'm ready. So here are some answers to your questions, some questions to your questions, and I'd love to, at the end of this video, share some of the things that you sent me, because I received incredible things and incredible thoughts. Thank you. Also, I figured this is an opportunity for me to drive around a bit and show you some places. So here we are. Let's go. Anyways, you asked a question regarding what advice I would give to somebody who would like to learn an instrument on their own. I am vastly outmatched by so many musicians um, in their talents and abilities, and there's so much talent out there that I'm not an authority at all. Regardless, I guess where my advice comes in, as somebody who has carried music throughout their life, is to focus on the music you want to play. I started with a classical backing, and I really appreciate that for what it was able to teach me, and I appreciate the bass that it gave me, but it wasn't until I explored Celtic music and the various niches that I'm very interested in now that I knew I would keep music in my life for the long run because it was what I wanted to play. That initial sort of phase where you're a little bit more vulnerable with the instrument is worth keeping in mind. Play the thing that you want to play and then you'll get better at it. And then, since you already like the sound, it'll get you excited to practice. That's a good life. Anyways, I'll sit here for a bit and then I'll talk more. Oh, hi. Hello. You are closer, and the sun is lower. <laughs> Much lower. I'm actually running out of time. I should pick up the pace on these. So <laughs> here are some more questions. Are you a filmmaker? Yes. Yes, I am. I was working professionally in the sort of orthodox sense of shooting commercials and social media content and stuff like that, promoting companies um, before this. And now I'm writing the interesting middle ground of being a film colorist part-time and doing this which is exploring the world of content and social media as a creator. And that has been an interesting thing to balance. I'm slowly figuring out how to kind of treat these productions as a filmmaker, but also make them efficient enough so that I don't go crazy. That's been uh, wonderful and difficult and full of a lot of lessons. How do you deal with phases of no creative flow? That's an incredibly good question. I could make a video, a whole series of videos, and many people have made series of videos dealing with that exact same question, which I believe is a inherently personal experience. I think that we all have our tailored version of creative burnout. My version is that I implode. I, if I get sad or if I get overworked and stressed, I bring everything in on myself and get very introspective, which isn't a very creative space per se, but does make for some rather angsty poetry. <laughs> but um, at least when I'm feeling that way, I have to come to a place like this, have a change of environment. It just has to be something that forces you to reassess what your body's going through, what your mind's going through. Your body can be dealing with a lot of things that take a while for your mind to catch on to. So for me, sometimes it's as simple as getting more sleep, getting better food or more of it. I forget to feed myself pretty often. All of that can compound so that before you know it, 
you have creative burnout and it might not even be due to what you would initially believe is creative burnout. So check in with yourself. At least that's what I have to do. And I'm getting better at it. I'm still not great. The mosquitoes, the mosquitoes are everywhere. It's the part of spring I don't like. How do you make a living? I set out to have a bit of a change in the direction of my career, switching from a nine to five job to coming out here and having a year of experimentation. Right now, this channel is roughly six months old and that has allowed me a lot, a lot of experimentation in figuring out which direction is sustainable for me and which direction I want to go. If I were to share all the different ways that I'm currently making money, um, that would include the donations that you have so charitably given me, um, the sales of my album on Bandcamp and the donations on Spotify for my album, the eclectic work that I do in terms of I've sold some footage, I have been doing intermittent color work as a colorist and taking my time to kind of figure all of this out and let it breathe before I really dive into one thing in specific. That being said, in a couple months from now, or uh, just a short time, it may look entirely different as I continue to poke around and see what works. That's not much of an answer, but that's what I'm currently doing. What do you hear in the wind? Well, right now, the wind is bringing me sounds of a lot of different birds. I wish I could name them. And there's some geese, and there are a lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> what is your biggest dream in life? Well, last time I mentioned my bed and breakfast, but beyond that, I would like to be able to be part of changing the way that traditional media is seen and expanding this world of content and making it a place that maybe takes things a little bit slower, but also cares about a moment like this where I'm not trying to put on a show and I'm not trying to do anything astoundingly special, but instead as a means of actually connecting with people and savoring that connection without wanting to immediately click away and go to something that is jaw-dropping and astounding. What is your favorite food? I feel like I'm going to be an incredible disappointment in this. I really do like the tastes of a lot of food, but my body reacts very strongly to the amount of energy food gives me. And if I don't eat the right things, I immediately get super sleepy. I love the taste of pizza, but I don't have it nearly as often now because I've switched to lentils, canned lentils, because I'm a grown man that can't remember to feed himself and they're always on hand. <laughs> oh, that's probably so bad. <laughs> so dreadful. I'm sorry. The sky is looking absolutely incredible right now. I'll show you that and then we'll find a new angle. Absolutely stunning. What is something you learned from each of your parents? I like that question. I learned a lot from my parents. Um, mostly how to kill mosquitoes. I learned a lot from my parents. And I can't boil them down to simple statements, but I know that from my father, I learned a lot about discipline and structure and how important it is in order to achieve things and to create a sense of balance um, and work towards balance. I also learned from my mother how adapting to, th to things um, and remaining as open as possible is also important for balance. That also comes with accepting people for who they are and seeking to ask questions as opposed to make definitive statements about things. There's so much more, but that's what I'll share. Are you happy with who you are? I am. I'm also happy with who I'm building myself towards and who will look back through their memories and say, go get them. You're doing a good job. <laughs> I have bad days. I have good days. I have a lot of triumphs and I have had a lot of moments of having to reevaluate. And that's been what I imagine any young life is supposed to be full of. And if I embrace it, then I'm happy. When I try to fight it, then I feel not so happy. But right now, there are cows on that horizon and they're adorable and they're just doing their thing. And I'm happy. <laughs> Do you have any dog stories? Yes, yes I do. Lots of them, too many. I was raised 
by a dog named Midas, and he was a shelter dog, got him when he was roughly one year old or so, and he decided that I was his human, and I would have it no other way. He wanted nothing to do with other dogs, I think he had some bad experiences, but he was a very proud dog. He would always straighten up and, and become very um, bashful when you would pet him. And he loved the attention, but he just didn't quite know what to do with it. This carried over to other parts of his life, so we used to have chickens as well. And he would show up and pick up the eggs of the chickens one by one from their nest and line them up on the porch of our house next to a sliding glass door. And we would wake up and go and just see a line of eggs, unbroken, all lined up. But the one day, the one day I remember personally seeing him break an egg, where he picked it up and he wasn't ginger enough, it broke and all the yolk went out both sides of his mouth and he just stared at me as if he was suddenly naked <laughs> and <laughs> was so embarrassed. The poor guy, he just seemed to have this structure to his world. And when the egg failed, everything failed. <laughs> What is the weirdest feeling you've had? That's such a good question. I've had a lot of weird feelings. I have a bit of a weird feeling right now, sitting and talking with you. I have a lot of pent up energy and I want to run somewhere. I think it's because I've been sitting a lot of the day. But besides that, every once in a while, I stare in a mirror and I look at the eyes of that row that is staring back at me and I can't quite make the connection as to what it would be like to stare through those eyes, even though I know that they're my eyes. Don't know if that makes any sense, but it's the disconnect I sometimes feel when I'm staring at a mirror. And those cows are very entertaining. Have you had any interesting dreams lately? What are your dreams like? It wasn't until this year that I thought to question the nature of my dreams. And that's been a rewarding experience because most of my dreams fall into two categories. They're either an extremely vivid and realistic experience, usually of something that isn't very nice, um, either walking along the edge of a cliff and knowing that at some point I'm going to jump off and that's terrifying and it just goes over and over again. Those aren't great dreams. Or the wonderful type of dream, which is a wash of color, sometimes including a geometric figure, that just changes color accompanied by comforting sounds. Sometimes it's the voices of people that I love. Sometimes it's absolute gibberish, but it's always comforting. Things are getting dark now, so I'm going to take you to one final place and then we can go through the rest of your questions. It is 7.47 and all of the sounds of night have suddenly begun all at once within the last few seconds. Have you ever been in love? How did it feel? I have been in love. In fact, knowing that I had been in love and being able to tell myself that in many ways has informed what I currently explore. My goal right now is to build myself into the person that can most effectively love, that can love everybody, not just romantically, but um, love myself as well. Love is such a difficult experience and notion to bottle up inside one word, and that's, in my eyes, why artists exist. We try to say a million different things as a substitute, and we create so many things in order to just share ourselves. And love is sharing yourself, in my eyes. But naturally, there's so much more to that. So I imagine if I were to describe what it felt like, I'd have to write you a poem <laughs> and I'd have to sing you a song. And that is what I do. So I imagine all of my work is a result of love. And it's not just that very special romantic love, um, which is wonderful, but it is of the love I feel right now as a person that's lucky to have love in their life. Is that a good answer? Is that a good answer? What life lesson did you learn the hard way? Oh, that is such a good question. I'd say that through this channel, through every creative project that I've undertaken, through all of those experiences, I have learned at various stages the hard way that regardless of how much 
passion you have for something and how much you love it and how much you care about it. You can also smother your own passion for things and you can um, either go too hard into whatever you love and care about and end up making yourself, in my case, physically sick if I get too stressed out. Um, or you can sometimes paralyze yourself, which I've done as well, where I have a lot of fear of hurting the thing that I love. So I guess that would be it. You can smother things in two ways, by burning yourself out or by never doing them in the first place. And I've learned both of those the hard way. But they're worth it. Any thoughts on marriage? I'm a fan. I hope to do it someday, if I find the right person. What's your favorite photo or video you've taken? That's a hard one. I feel like I've been given a lot of photos and videos just by being at the right place and the right time with the right mentality. Usually I have to either stay up late or wake up early and just wait in many cases. Wait until the sky gets blue and everything gets glowy. Wait until an animal starts to trust you. Um, that's been my experience lately. But that's brought a couple of my favorite images. I have a couple in mind, but I'll share them with you now. There's this one, which I really like. And then there's this one, which I also really like. And maybe if I'm feeling super excited, I'll add this one, which I really like as well. So, as it's terribly dark now, I'm going to call it a day. Go and get some food, some rest, and I will share with you a few things that made me smile. But also, last week, I made a playlist with you of songs that I'm listening to as I currently write my next album. So, it is dark. There are a couple of owls hooting away. I'm going to get some rest and head back home. But. I want to share a few things that made me smile with you, as well as that playlist we made together last week. That meant so much to me. And thank you for the music recommendations. I'm listening to them as I currently write my next album. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful week. And I might just sit here a little while longer and hear the sounds. We'll see you. Bye. Da da dum 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 da da dum dum da da dum da da dum 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 da da dum dum da da dum da da dum dum Na da dum dum da da dum Na da dum 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 da da dum Na da dum 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 Na da dum dum da da dum Oh hi hello oh Mira, esto es... 
estas son mis favoritas, Sagebrush Buttercup. Aparecen antes que muchos de los otros florecitas. Wow. Can I help you? <laughs>